Good morning. Oh. I thought it was like a baby kitten. Oh, hey, should be. Hey. Good morning. Just when we thought we had one minute of freedom. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Look how big this guy is. Hey. We got a big surprise back there. Oh, here Felix. Well, I made them. This is an alien ship. That's Felix. And that right there is um. I'm gonna go get this one right here. Is eating snacks and pooping. So today is going to be like six high of 62, which is exciting. So spring is starting to roll in. In about a little over two weeks, we're going to be getting 13 baby chickens and a rooster. Matthew has the garden fully planned out. So um, yeah, a lot of progress. You'll see a lot of the chicken coop. Matthew's breaking down the old one that was on our property and rebuilding it closer to the home. What color is this? We've got Jeffrey. What color Jeffrey's such is a this? good boy. We've had Jeffrey for about five weeks now. So he is well adjusted. Mother started becoming a prepper randomly yeah. last week. It's not random. I mean, the older I get, having kids, I think it's just important to be prepared for anything. And brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a red bird. What can that mean? I think the one thing we can all, and I mean all of us, agree on, is that we are very much so in a, in a sweet spot, in a bubble. Things are way too easy and comfortable. Um, just like grocery shopping, door like DoorDash, Uber, like people don't grocery shop anymore. Even getting everything delivered, and then just seeing the tension between, as uh, simple as between like an Uber driver and someone's home they're dropping it off to, you know? Two, There's just two, too much tension, two, too much, two, too much just like congestion. And I feel like we're on the brink of something. I don't know what it is, but regardless, it's important in my mind to be prepared um, for anything. We might not even use anything, but, yeah. Worst case scenario, yeah. we need to Purple use it. Cat. It's nice to have it. I am making a sandwich to take on the road for lunch. I'm doing very low sodium, so I usually just pack something if we're gonna go out. Theo has art class today. It's a drop-off preschool style art class, art-based preschool. It's only 90 minutes, so I usually drop him off. Then me and Felix hang out, we do something, we meet up with some mom friends and their kids for coffee. So I'm using this bread that I just found at Whole Foods. I know about the company. I feel like the ingredients have changed in the company's bread, and it looked a lot better. That was Theo. So I was excited to try it. It's base culture. Um, I tried it a long, long time ago. I really like it. It tastes as close to bread as possible. The ingredients, main ingredients are water, resistant tapioca starch, coconut oil, honey, and then it's like a seed, super seed bread. So there's sunflower seeds, um, flax seeds, and then there's some coconut flour. What are you making? I'm making my sandwich for lunch. Why? Because when we go out, I need a sandwich. So if I don't use this base culture bread or when I run out of it, if I don't have time to go to Whole Foods, because Whole Foods is a little bit more of a hike now, now that we live further out, I will just use Ezekiel bread. I have two of the shirts. Came to you, but it's the next shirt right here. I'm showing up with my finger. I'm gonna tape it now. Huh? You broke this. Me? Yeah. No, Felix. Was it Felix or you? Felix. It was Felix. Oh, I hear it. You're drone. That's not my drone. Our trains are back without their child. Yeah, I think so. They're so cool. Let me change the lens and get closer. Stay back. I've never heard them this loud. Wait, did you tell him anything about Jeffrey? 
Um, just that we've had him for five weeks already. He's such a good boy. He's a good boy, right? Yep. He's a St. Bernard. He will be 14 weeks this week. So just over three months. And he's already 45 pounds. He could be anywhere between 150 and 200. He's lazy, playful, eager to please. I'm just learning about all these different types of breeds. Certain breeds are eager to please. Certain breeds are called like Velcro dogs. Like they'll never leave your side. So you don't have any- He's time. eager to please, they say? Yeah. Mega just got done making them second breakfast. They're turning into hobbits. What do you make them? Theo has a breakfast sandwich, egg and cheese. Fifi has some maple sausage. Ooh, yummy. Okay guys, so the cranes were gone for only like probably a month or two. Now they're back, but they don't have their baby anymore. So maybe the baby got married to someone. Cause they bond for life, right? Mate for life, yeah. I'm prepping for the garden season, which I'm very nervous about cause this is way bigger than I've ever grown before. You remember last year, if you watched our videos, we had like a little strip, probably like, what is it? I want to say like maybe 30 square feet of planting space. We have eight 30 by 50, 30 inch by 50 foot garden beds, maybe. So like about a thousand square feet, I think. Maybe it's about a thousand square feet. So like, you know, I've never done anything like this. Probably gonna fail in a lot of ways. All that I have going so far is the potatoes sprouting a little bit. Three different kinds. All organic, right? Certain things. Yeah, so if you wanna plant them, I think ideally you need like locally grown organic potatoes because they spray like some kind of thing that makes them not spud up like this. And then that's what grows the plant. And I'm an idiot, I don't know what I'm talking about, so never done this before. Tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. And then I'm also trying to, I took some cuttings from our pine trees, I'm trying to propagate them, make like more of a barrier against the street with trees. We're getting chickens, little baby chicks in three weeks, and a rooster. I'm not sure about the rooster. Comment down below if you guys know about roosters. Are they, what are they good for? I think they protect the flock a little bit. Obviously, doomsday scenario, we can, reproduce our chickens and you know be more sustainable long term or even if, it comes if he's to that. annoying us yeah i like the idea of having a rooster my dad says it's a terrible idea we'll just play it by ear see how it goes our neighbor says coyotes come for like two or three months at the start of the spring mm -hmm. and they'll like they're very tricky they like eat your chickens they try luring your dog out to their their pack and stuff so our neighbors have been shooting them yeah and that's been helping so we gotta kill coyotes and kill raccoons i guess now yeah raccoons are a big problem got a bunch of seeds which mega put in this binder i mainly got it from uh two different places johnny's seeds and mi gardener which is from michigan oh and i got this so for starting the plants i'm going to try doing soil blocks instead of like pots that you that you have to transplant. These are just blocks of soil that are sitting in these. And then you can plant them directly into the soil outside. You wanna hold the camera, Theo, while I pull the cookies out? Yo, yeah. Mega made me breakfast, some sausage and three eggs. And Theo is going to art school, <laughs> his favorite. So here's a full plan for the garden. It's a pretty big undertaking. I think we're gonna struggle a lot, but I think, you know, if we do it for a few years, it'll get easier and easier. The first thing I did was a soil test. From my understanding, this gets a little complicated. It's kind of hard to understand it all. The pH and the organic matter percentage, I guess are probably the most important things. I don't know, maybe that's not even true. But uh, the organic matter is a little under 2%, which is not great from, my, from what I've read. And the soil pH is 6.7, which seems fine. I think maybe a little lower might even be better, like 6.3, 6.5, but not a big deal. Main thing is the organic matter, which I'm gonna try remedying by ordering a bunch of compost. I have a big compost pile going. I don't think it's gonna be ready for the start of the season though. And I'm also referencing this book, The Intelligent Gardener. Um, he has like a prescription for adding different amendments to the soil. So I'm not gonna use any chemical fertilizer, which obviously makes it a little bit harder in the short term, but I think it makes it easier in the long term, like your plants aren't as reliant on the inputs from outside. And then I also have a worm bin in the basement, which is going to help a little bit. And then I also have some charcoal 
that I'm gonna inoculate. It's called biochar, I'm gonna add that to the garden beds. So I'm doing a lot to help the fertility because that's kind of my major concern. I think over time, over the years, it'll improve no matter what. I think maybe for the first year it could be not ideal, but we'll see, who knows. So I'm gonna start a lot of the seeds in here. So that's most of the garden stuff. Book update, we haven't made a video in a couple months, I think. Just because we've been busy moving in, things changing, the winter depression stuff. Not real depression, but just like, you know, seasonal sadness type thing. Also, I just am feeling a little burned out, I think, from just the, like the seven years of Keto Connect, video, like three videos a week. It's just, it sounds dumb because obviously people have like hard jobs, like, you know, working on oil fields and Alaskan crab fishermen and stuff. But uh, it is, it's like a different type of stress and burnout type thing when you're, I don't know. It's, it's obviously first world problems, but yeah, feeling a little burned out for a while. I think I'm getting back into it though. I've been into books though hard, especially since the start of this year. I think this is my fifth year of like reading. I've always read a little bit, but five years ago or maybe four years ago, I did a 52 book challenge and ever since then I've been kind of hooked on it. Getting deeper and deeper into it. At first I was doing all nonfiction because to me that made sense. I want to learn about the world. I don't want to like just have fantasy stories, but I've come to find out that fiction might tell you more about the world than nonfiction. It's actually, I love it now. So I'm just like pure fiction these days. Currently reading Lonesome Dove. I'm about halfway done. Considered the best Western of all time. Pulitzer Prize winner. I probably read 300 books in the last five years. The best five I've read. No particular order. Definitely in the top five, Infinite Jest. Just a masterpiece, undeniable. Crime and Punishment. Jonathan Franzen, I think he is my favorite author. I would say The Corrections, probably my favorite. They're both, Freedom's also really good though. Definitely, this might be my favorite, honestly. Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. I think most people would like that one too. Multi-generational story. If I had to round it out, Stoner. Really uh, mundane, boring-ish. I mean, it's not boring, it's just a very ordinary story, but it's, all these books are really sad too. That's my number one. Number one theme I'm looking for. And then I'm working on the chicken coop too. The garden's gonna be right here. I have these wood chips for the pathways. One problem is definitely gonna be the deer. So this is gonna be the annual vegetable garden, which is what I'm planning for. 32 by 50 feet. And then this back here is gonna be a perennial fruit orchard with some other stuff interplanted in between it, I think. Some annual stuff. So I'm gonna get maybe eight or 10 fruit trees, keep them small, get some like blueberry, raspberry, strawberry, blackberry bushes and stuff. And this will be less labor intensive. And then over here is where the chicken coop is, where they had it. And look at this giant, it's the biggest tree for miles, I think. So my dad helped me figure out what to do with this. We've been taking it apart over the last two days. Really big. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna save the front wall here, fix up the nesting boxes. I'm gonna replace the roof. I'm gonna replace the back wall there. And I'm gonna shorten it up. I'm gonna cut right there. And then I'm also gonna raise it three feet off the ground to protect it from predators and to make it easier to clean. And basically the goal is to start growing some amount of our own food, slowly over time, do more and more. I think it's hard. I mean, we have five, about five usable acres. So we could do like sheep or pigs or something. Cow would be kind of hard because I don't think we have really enough pasture at all. We could do some chickens just for like some supplemental meat or maybe sheep. Sheep would probably be the best for this, this amount of land. And then the location of the chicken coop, we're thinking right here. We just left the coffee shop. Huh? I just got an iced coffee with cream. Now I'm gonna go pick up Theo and then probably get them something to eat. And we're going to go to Myers, which if you guys have not been, you are missing out big time. It's like an upscale Walmart, but just so much better. I'm obsessed. I love going as much as possible. So we're gonna go run that errand and then grandma and grandpa, Matt's parents, are, be are coming over to help with the chicken coop. So then we'll probably have to head home earlier than usual. We got a playground. Oh, I know, I saw the playground, but it's for a little kid's preschool. 
so we can't go on it. Okay, just picked up Theo from art class. Show us I something. I made this and... Beautiful. What? I made this and what else? What letters did you, what letter did you work on today? E. No. F. F. F for flowers. That's why you drew the flowers. Fish. Fish, good. And I also made a couple of little stuff all by myself. All by yourself. And I made this. Beautiful. And I made this. Love it. And I made two more things. This. Mm-hmm. And I made all this in one day. Oh my god, we can smell some horse manure. I made this. That's beautiful. I smell horse poop. I smell horse poop. I smell horse poop. No, I'm a bad. So Matthew and his dad, Grandpa, you're right there, are working on the chicken coop. What are you doing? Are you going poopy? No, Oh, and there's Matthew. There's the chicken coop. He's gonna wipe out. Disassembly complete for now. So we're not using any of that that's remaining. We got the front, six nesting boxes, which is too many. I think I'm gonna cover most of them up. And then that piece right there. And then these are two pieces. So the two sides. Oh. So I have three sides, the front, two sides. I have to build a back that'll attach these two together. And then I'm gonna raise it up three feet and build a floor. Where's the roof? Oh, the roof is rotted too. So I'm gonna get a metal roof for the top. Okay, cool. And we're gonna move it up by the house. I bought a sawzall to do this disassembly and it's a great tool. I didn't realize it's that a scary it existed. Tool. No, it's actually not that scary. Can it cut through bone? Probably, yeah. Okay, we got kids crying. What did you do? What happened? Okay, we've got dinner. This is, woo, the fire's going strong. This is Theo's. Felix loves broccoli, so broccoli, eggs, toasted, buttered bread, and this is Fifi's yummy, and avocado. My tummy. The only thing we haven't started doing yet is listening to country music. Which will never happen. I doubt it'll, yeah, probably not. I never say never, but well, probably I, not. Yeah, it won't be our mainsties. His garlic mom bread. brought over bread, so she, I made some garlic bread, and then just ground beef, broccoli, Italian seasoning, salt, pepper, onion, fresh garlic, butter. Smell the food. They smell the cow. Oh man, he's really... I know. Do you really smell our food? What are you doing? Delicious dinner. Oh, you're filming me. Yeah. Hi. I thought you were acting up for the camera. No. Meg is making friends with a bunch of new moms. You gotta survive. Somehow, friendship's the only way. Fire's dying down. Sun is starting to set. Those are some good looking chickens, aren't they? They're beautiful. Really healthy looking. Yeah, we should ask him what they what he feeds them. Whoop, 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 be careful. It's not it's not a playing area. They're just constantly trying to kill themselves. Yeah. Like, Oi! Living in the country definitely ups the likelihood of that happening by like at least 400%, I would say. Yeah. Do you think we have a higher chance of getting like like a, a house, someone coming in our house no, and... Much lower. Or like, yeah, stalking and raping. Like, I get so scared to be out here because these areas yeah. make you feel... I think like, you can hide bodies you out here. just have like 15 guns around here. We can hide hey. bodies in our backyard. But no, people will enter your home more in the suburbs and stuff. That's hard to imagine. Because there's so many homes. No, the chickens. Okay, should we end it? Closing down. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned, I got, I'm getting three different types of chickens. Rhode Island Red, which I think it, that might be what those are. I'm not 100% sure though. Those look like just like the Issa Brown, like the standard. They look pretty red, right? I could see those being called Rhode Island Red. Buff Orpington, 
and uh, Americana no. or be careful or Americana, I don't know, I'm something so like that. Biscuit. They're just three of the most popular cold tolerant yeah, breeds. So. Yeah, we need that for sure. Apparently, Mega's debating with one of her friends whether we live in the country or not. I'm not. Her and her husband are. So she asked me. She's like, "Are we a suburb or are we in the country?" I she asked like, you about her house or our house. Town we live in. Hers is more suburb. But she's still in. The, she has two acres of property, though. Yeah. So does everyone in that. But it's in like a subdivision. A neighborhood, yeah. Of two, every lot's two acres. No, she out in the country, though. Yeah. I would say. Depends. I mean, if you're talking to like city folk, yeah, she's living in the country. I mean, if you're in the house, it's the same as any other house. So. Yeah. Okay, gotta go wrangle the kids. It was a good day. It's a fun day. Grandpa came and helped out a lot, which was nice with the coop. So are you gonna be building tomorrow? No. I guess you could just do that over the next couple of weeks now that you're good to go, right? Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thanks for joining us. We'll try to keep up. Oh, there's fire on the ground. Uh-oh. Try to keep putting more vlogs out now that things are blossoming. Okay, say bye. Whoop. Bye-bye. Bye, bye Poop. What? Can you just say bye, guys? Bye, Poop. Just say bye, guys. Bye, bye. Bye, bye, guys. He bye, cannot control his mouth. Bye, bye.